What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, we had spoken about it, Brian. And I brought up the names of the movies that they did, Brian, that were without question successful. And what put the Russos on the map. Just a few days later, Brian, after our conversation, out of nowhere, the Russos are back. Under what conditions, Brian? That's what we have to explore because the initial reason was because they spent too much money on projects that weren't, that didn't go anywhere. Citadel, some other films, uh, projects that, he, they, that they've worked on with Netflix and, and other platforms. So the Russos are back. They're doing secret, uh, secret wars, supposedly for two movies, Brian? Yep. Brian, what happened? Where did, from our conversation, it, it seemed like it was a quick conversation, but not a well thought out conversation, Brian. Well, I mean, the prior rumor indicated Disney was the one that said no, that the Russos made the call, offered their mm -hmm. services, and it was Disney that said thanks, but no thanks. And the reported reason was concerns about their ability to manage on budget, given Disney's trying to limit cost. Yeah. Um, that certainly seemed well founded given, you know, what they spent on the gray man, what they spent on Citadel, what they're rumored to be spending on electric state. I mean, these guys have gotten a lot of budget, um, since yeah. becoming big time Hollywood film directors. And as you said, since or outside the MCU, they've not really delivered much in terms of return. Um, their biggest win X Marvel has been as producers. They were producers on everything, everywhere, all at once, which obviously won an Academy, won a number of Academy Awards, but they were not the directors for that. This obviously in theory would end a bizarre saga for finding a director for not just Avengers 5, but Avengers 6. Um, we had Destin Cretton at one point. The rumor was they actually, there's still a lot of reports saying they offered it to Sean Levy, whose Deadpool and Wolverine is coming out. This week, but there was a report also that they also offered it to uh, Kugler, and he said no. Yep, which we said he would. So they so everyone has been passing on this. There never was a director for Secret Wars, even when all the all the reports we had were for Avengers Five. There never had been a report for Avengers Six, but the thought at the time was there were going to be different directors, and now we wind up back with the Russos doing five and six, albeit with five no longer being Kang Dynasty, but being retooled and rethought. And I'm guessing more made into a, a true part one, part two, more similar to how Infinity War and Endgame went together. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, in the end, right, you can get your Thanos image ready, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> except you can have them side by side this time, two Thanoses from the multiverse, twins. Um, Brian, but we have to sort of, do you think there was a, another conversation had? Because the way I look at it is that, hey, nobody else wants this. Yeah. These dudes did four joints for us and yeah. they were all successful. Perhaps these other projects that they've done don't fit or I guess don't connect with other fans. These are just projects that they were given to do for other platforms and they took it. They wanted to spread their wings, so to speak. $3 billion? That's what it was, it was 2.7 or 3 billion? 2.7. Uh, Endgame is just a tiny shade under three, over two nine. Yeah, oh, okay. And Infinity War is two. So it's like, what's the Civil problem? War was billion. And Winter Soldier was 750. Do you think the Russos are going back to the MCU and saying, hey, we'll do this movie. Hey, it's going to cost what it's going to cost, right? Because considering what we're doing here. And to be honest, with the roster that we have now, I don't think we can do it. I think we can bring, this is the Russos talking, I think we can bring back the game. Pitch him a compelling story. Get that money ready so we can do this. Because 
another way will be the wrong way because there's no way you can get three get to three billion dollars or even get to two brian even a billion possibly brian with the roster that they have you have to put it into question well i think you could argue both sides of the table need each other right now we just went through the russo's lack of success since endgame you've obviously had a lot of discussions about marvel's mixed results since endgame so maybe yeah. you could argue that both sides of the table now have a motivation to say look we're better together than we were apart and we both need this like we yeah. both need a hit and if we take it from marvel's perspective your obvious advantages are you hit on one familiarity with current cast old cast uh, i would add familiarity with the process Right, so all the people we don't see who are behind the scenes, familiarity with the Marvel machine, the Russos obviously had no problem operating within that. I think from the studio's perspective, it, it gives them a feeling of, on the one hand, safety, because they feel like, okay, we, we know what these guys are about, whereas if we're bringing in new directors for Avengers 5 and 6, you know, there's some variability there that we haven't dealt with. And they could be talking themselves into, yeah, we know the Russos will spend a lot of money, but a director who's never directed an Avengers movie and now steps into an Avengers movie that's a mess might wind up spending even more money, uh, just not intentionally. So you know, maybe there is incentive on both sides. Now, I think as you and I have discussed, it does not seem at the moment like Marcus and McFeely are part of this, and that's concerning and it's especially concerning in light of another headline that didn't get as much attention i think i sent it to you in the last couple of days um so michael waldron who was rewriting hang dynasty is no longer on the project somebody else took over right well they haven't said so the question is did waldron finish the script and now it's being polished i or believe that's what taken, i read yes. or was he taken off the project now the Russos are coming in, is it gonna get redone? And if it gets redone, then I would say, I don't understand why they're not beating down Marcus and McFeely's door to say, you're the ones who have to write this because you're the only ones who can. What I guess is a, is, is a conversation of determining what do they bring to, what everyone brings to the table, right? Uh, and that negotiating aspect of it, because uh, it's not for the fun of it, although it is fun. At the end of the day, we got to pay bills. So it's just a, a very interesting turn of events. A lot of uh, 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 there's one word that was thrown out: desperation. Now we've seen Brian that is desperation on both parts, possibly, um, for them to get together and relive that magic. For the Russos, I know they've publicly stated in the past, Secret Wars was their dream project. So there is that incentive of if this is migrating more toward a true part one and part two of Secret Wars, creatively, they would certainly be more interested in doing that than any other version of, of this. Um, but none of it changes the fact, Pablo, the pieces on the board are a mess. I mean, that that I don't care who's directing and who's writing. You, you're not facing, you know, you, the Russos came into the MCU at a key time. We talked about it with Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier mm -hmm. is sort of the seminal movie that supercharges the next six years of MCU projects along with Guardians of the Galaxy. But the MCU today is far more, there's far more, more chaos than there was in 2013. There's more characters, there's more projects, there's more IP and not a lot of it's working. There's not a lot of known heroes that people are really fired up about. So I don't know that having the Russo's back changes that in one movie. You still have to make us care about these heroes and you still have to now write in a new villain that we don't have any real history with. Yeah. I think there's a far greater chance that this winds up being disappointing, certainly relative to what the studio and the brothers would be, would be expecting yeah. than it is they come over the top and match mm -hmm. or exceed what they did previously, which I almost think is impossible. But what if 
you heard the names of RDJ, of Chris Evans, and some of the OGs coming back. Does it nudge you towards the positive? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess it, if we hear that, to me, that's the Avengers equivalent of Deadpool and Wolverine, right? I mean, you're taking the existing stars and you are using them for kind of one last big ride to make a lot of money. Does it make me feel any better about the bigger lo picture, longer term prospects and, you know, the arcs of problems that Marvel's having? No, it's, it's, it's more of a billion dollar bandaid. Yeah. And it's very Star Warsy to my, to my mind, right? It kind of is starting to imply that like, you cannot grow this universe past this one original family of characters. I understood that reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we always knew, Brian, my, my vision for what Kevin was trying to do or accomplish was nothing. For me, it was past a certain point where we would have to recast. I always felt that we were always gonna go towards the, the James Bond treatment, but for many characters mm -hmm. in order to keep it going because these characters don't go away, right? right? Instead, they continued on with this multiverse and it's created chaos. Let's just call it that because that's what it was. And that's what it has been since that introduction of the multiverse. Again, I'll reference Tracy. He said, open door, multiverse, open door. That was, that was the beginning of curiosity in terms of what this would look like. And then ultimately disappointment. So what they're trying to do here is perhaps go for that final one and then have to, and restart everything because that's what we're heading towards anyway, right, Brian? Yeah. I, mean, I think that's what it has to be and that's what they want to tee up to get to the mutants and, um, and so forth. So, I mean, I do, I understand all of the incentives to do this. And given that nobody else wants the job, I can certainly understand why this is a marriage that would happen. Um, I just think it obscures a little bit the core fundamental issue of where we're at. And I think even yeah. bringing the original cast back is doing that. It's the look over here, not over there. But Brian, because they were four for four, Brian, and if they're able to bring back the OGs and give us a compelling story for Secret Wars, Brian, I don't see how the excitement doesn't build up, especially after that first one and what they reveal in that one in order to make us go for that second one because Endgame was that big one, right? Everybody, yo, Endgame had people scratching, you know? It was like, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? And when we got it, we were blown away. Not by everything, Hulk, but you know, for the most part, they, they did a fantastic job in delivering us a second part to this, Brian, because of the way they ended that first one. So some of those elements, Brian, how they go about doing this part one, part two, and given the Russo's uh, seemingly having a vision for this because they've been wanting to do this, they know it, Brian. I don't see why it would be a bad move. Um, there's still more to come, and I, hopefully we get those announcements of the OGs because without them, I don't. You and I, I think, would agree that whatever they able to bring to the table is not going to be, it's not going to be enough food. I agree. But again, the emotional beats of infinity war were already built in the prior. Project. That. So True think that. about when you watch infinity war, you get that opening scene, you see Loki get his neck snap. You have history with that character. Yes, sir. To make you care about that moment. When you see the Hulk get served on that ship, you have history with the Hulk that makes you go, oh no, like when he's getting, when he gets it. Even Heimdall getting killed in front of you. You're like, you've been with this character on a couple of projects where you're like, oh, I don't like that. That's one of my guys, like a supporting guy, but it's still a guy. When you see 
you know, bearded Cap and Natasha and Falcon show up in the subway station, everyone cheered, like, because of everything that came before. And this is my point that, like, you don't have any of that with anyone yeah. new. So you have you have the pops of, hey, look, it's RDJ. Hey, look, it's Chris Evans. And I'm not saying that's worthless, but I'm simply saying the, the degree not of enough. difficulty to pull off Infinity War and Endgame was a 10 out of 10 in cinematic history. To make that worthwhile and make it pay, make it land, and make it live on as it has. I would argue the degree of difficulty to do this is 100. Because you're you're not starting from a position of strength yeah. and momentum. You've yeah, got to yeah, rebuild yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. and then come over the top. Into how they do it? Yeah, how they do it would be very. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you when when thinking about it like that, and yeah, it's it's, it's exciting that the Russos want to are going to come back and are going to do Secret War Part One, Part Two, whatever they decide to do there. But there is that absence of momentum of connect, connection to the characters mm -hmm. and connections to storyline that we just don't have and that we perhaps forgot because there's just been so many and quite honestly not worth remembering. So I think what you're hoping for, the analogy is, you're hoping for this to be the 98 Bulls, not the Jordan Wizards. Mm -hmm. If you go back, the 98 Bulls were running on fumes. Scottie Pippen's back injury, contract issues. You know, they almost got knocked out by the Pacers. It didn't look like they had much left in the tank, but they still had MJ, right? And that carried them ultimately to victory. But it was kind of ugly. If you go back yeah. and actually break down those games and those playoffs, it was ugly, but they got there. Yeah. Versus a couple years later, Jordan comes back with the Wizards, and it's like, I didn't need this as a <laughs> coder to his career. So even though he was still actually pretty good, right? And that's yeah. the thing, like, Jordan still averaged 23 points a game that first year with the Wizards. He had a 50-point game. Disney may look at this and say, you know what? If we can squeeze a billion five and a billion out of these two movies, that's a job well done. You and I are not going to like that because I guarantee the kind of movie that settles around a billion. That if Secret Wars, Avengers 6 makes a total of – it makes Rise of Skywalker money, you and I are probably going to be looking at it and saying it's probably wise, Rise of Skywalker quality, and that's not what we want. But Disney may be like, that's good enough right now. We'll take it. Well, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the, the, the latest developments and how quick the turnaround in terms of the, 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 the news saying that there was a quick sort of interaction. They said no thank you to the Russos because obviously we already know what comes with working with the Russos after Endgame. Um, and let us know whether this will bring back the excitement juices that we've been lacking because they aren't any. And this is just anticipation for films that don't deliver on none of what we're not necessarily, listen, we sit down and give you money to spend two hours with you entertaining us. If it doesn't work, Brian, that's a problem because of the time. People's attention spans is crazy right now, even me. So if they're not able to hook us, which will be difficult, which will be very difficult because of all that absence of history and, and the momentum and storylines uh, we haven't gotten after the end game. Well, let's say No Way Home. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, but that's remnants of the past. Uh, um, people that, that worked on that. But let us know in the comment section below, are you excited now what the MCU will have to offer in terms of Avengers films? Do the OGs come back? Do they have to come back? I think they do, Brian. I agree. In order for this to work. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report. The show goes on! Yeah!